Well, I'm going to start with um, oxidative stress. And oxidative stress is essentially you need to think of this as a balance. So it's like a, a see in England we call it a seesaw, I think you call it a teeter totter or something like that. Um, and we've got two kind of opposing forces. We've got on one side we've got the antioxidants, if I spell it right, and pro-oxidants this side. And so normally there's a kind of a, a bit of a balance between these two. And oxidative stress occurs when you get an imbalance. So you maybe get a decrease in the antioxidants and you get an increase in the pro-oxidants. And you can get an increase in pro-oxidants because pro-oxidants include free radicals. Free radicals are chemicals with um, an unpaired electron. Normally electrons are paired. When they're unpaired, they become highly reactive. So it'll be a compound X with a that has an electron on it. Okay, and free radicals are denoted as a, a dot, essentially. So that's an electron, but it, you call it a free radical because it's got a, a dot on it. Okay, and then there are uh, reactive oxygen species that people may have heard of, things like hydrogen peroxide. And then various sources of these sorts of reactive compounds can be smoking, exposure to sunlight, so the UV radiation in sunlight, uh, pollution, diet. So really many things in the environment and our lifestyle, our pattern of lifestyle, can lead to these free radicals, reactive oxygen species, that increase the pro-oxidants. Um, and on the other side, antioxidants, there's diet. And you can think of, obviously, vitamin C, vitamin C, vitamin E, and so on. But there are also enzymic antioxidants inside the body, inside the cell. And these are things like superoxide dismutase and catalase. So you have this kind of balance between the two, and obviously the expo greater exposure to these will lead to more pro-oxidants, which if it's not balanced out by the antioxidants, will lead to oxidative stress.